It's a big problem, but I think I might have a solution on a tiny atomic scale. Just how tiny is mind-blowing. Imagine you scale up one hair on my head to the size of the Empire State Building. Then an atom would still only be the size of a sheet of paper lying on the sidewalk. Well, that's how big the building blocks of my power source will be. Welcome to the nano world. This is a carbon nanotube. It's made from a string of individual carbon atoms. They are incredibly strong, incredibly small, and they could hold the key to building my lightsaber. Brian Wardle researches nanotubes at MIT. On this wafer, uh, we have placed um, catalyst seeds, and the nanotubes grow from the seeds. Brian can show me how to build carbon nanotubes, but he can't talk about his main research, the military applications of nanotechnology. That's top secret. But we did discuss sci-fi weapons and how the symmetrical way carbon atoms stick together could be very useful for powering my lightsaber. Let's see what we have. They are extremely tiny. A single carbon nanotube is only 50 atoms across. That's 20,000 times smaller than the width of a single human hair. You're looking at a close-up of a single nanotube. The bumps you can see are the individual atoms. It's part of a forest of millions of carbon nanotubes. But how does this help power my lightsaber? Well, carbon nanotubes do something that carbon itself doesn't usually do. They conduct electricity. The unique symmetrical structure of the nanotube means that it has metallic properties. Incredibly, it can conduct 1,000 times more electricity than copper. So you can make a very basic battery out of them, one that simply holds a charge between two plates. Now imagine that rather than two plates, we're going to have trillions. So the battery stores tremendous amounts of energy on each plate, but if you have trillions of these plates at a molecular scale, you're talking about fantastic amounts of charge. Yes, yeah, so that's the idea. Um, very high surface areas that can be created with nanostructured materials. I could easily fit trillions of nano batteries into the handle of my lightsaber. They're only an atom thick. Manufacturing this many might sound like a tall order, but it turns out it's easy to grow nanotubes. You can imagine the, the seed particle being the size of a soccer ball. And we'd have a soccer pitch or a soccer field full of these soccer balls. The nanotubes would be growing from the soccer balls very, very fast, like in excess of 100 kilometers an hour. And they would grow into low Earth orbit in a matter of minutes. Scientists still don't understand why nanotubes grow the way they do. When they have uncovered the mystery of their growth, they may well be able to create the kind of batteries that I will need for my lightsaber. These batteries might be able to deliver the enormous amounts of energy necessary to generate and contain a plasma. Now, space wouldn't be a problem. We can store literally miles of carbon nanotubes and molecular batteries inside the hilt of a lightsaber. I'm about to reveal my blueprints to a group of sci-fi fans. I'm not sure what they're going to make of my plans, though. Thank you. Today, I'm going to show you how to build a lightsaber. First of all, a lightsaber has to be a plasma torch. My design is based on a blade made from super hot plasma. At the base of the lightsaber's handle is a titanium fan. I switch it on and 100 cubic feet of air per second is sucked into the hilt where it is superheated to create a 12,000 degree plasma. You wouldn't want superheated plasma dripping all over you, so an electromagnetic coil will keep the plasma in check. And then the question is, even if you contain it, what holds it together? Why doesn't the whole thing fall apart? And the answer is ceramics. A telescopic ceramic rod shoots out of the handle. It can resist the blistering temperatures generated by the plasma. But then the other question is, how do we energize it? Where is the battery? Where does the energy come from? 
And we see that the energy comes from nano batteries. Inside the Sabre's handle sit trillions of nano batteries powering the plasma generator. This technology could be with us in less than 50 years time. I guess I'm ready to power up and head into combat. So this is how you do it and win a battle against the bad guys. There it is, the lightsaber. It can cut through pretty much anything. Its electromagnetic field hums and crackles and it will clash in a duel. It really is an elegant weapon for a more civilized age. I think even Ben Kenobi would be proud of my design. But what do the sci-fi fans think? The nano battery seems like a really interesting use of nanotechnology. I'd be, I'd be curious to see the lightsaber put together. I'd use it. Definitely like the lightsaber design. Let's definitely like to be able to cut through things whenever I want it. Actually, I thought it was very interesting, very cool, um, very different. It's going to take 40, maybe 50 years to get this nano battery. What does a guy like me to do until that time? 